So, how did you how did you start Smart Jet? Okay. Um, so, I think it was in 2018. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, 2018, I was uh, working uh, the corporate circuit, and you know, um, I think it was. Okay, all I know is that it was the year 2018, and for a long time, I knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, because I remember going for my interview for the job I had at, at the time. Um, in that interview, they saw my portfolio, because I was interviewing for a graphic designer job. Yeah. And then they asked me why there was too much of freelance work in there, and I told them that, you know what, um, I'm coming into this company because I want to learn how to run a business. And I remember the manager saying, but you know what, we can't give you <laughs> a position if you want to then if you're gonna leave. leave, you know what I mean? But then I was like, ah, well, this is my portfolio, this is what I can do. But, you know, I'm here to learn the business cycle of, of things. And then, so, for, for the longest time, I wanted to, to start this hustle. And uh, side note, there was a guy in the hood. Yeah. Because uh, I came up in Glenora. That's where I was, I was, I was bred. Yeah. In Glenora, C extension, right? So, but I used to go to Highfield to chill with the boys uh, because at that time I was also a rapper, you know. Ah, oh, okay, uh, I see. With the group FIO. And at that time, I think that was 2014. At that time, we're the, we're the only, that's before t Guns. We're the yeah, only, yeah. No, <laughs> we're the only rappers from, from the ghetto, right? Uh, the, because the, the most prominent people were Jay Brown, uh, Tim Ten Diamond, and, and yeah. the whole MT <laughs> vibe, and Karma. Charisma, UTC. Yes, yeah, like. yes, yes, yes. So we're doing our thing. Um, it was hip hop, um, and so I used to go to Highfield and, and link up with the boys, and then there was this like you know a gosto, you know a band or yeah. <laughs> that we used to go to, and then there was this guy who used to bring sneakers, and these sneakers were really clean, man, and he used to clean sneakers for for the owner of the band or. Because the nigga, ah. the, the owner would be, f you know, f uh, fresh all the time. So he used to come with the shoes, and when he brought the shoes, everyone would like gather around, and you know they would marvel, you know. And so it bring like uh, like a bunch of shoes at, at one time, like no, not like really a bunch, or whatever like, even he's a wearing. Pair. Yeah, even okay. even okay. a pair, you know, when he comes back, because yeah. he was the in between. No, nobody really knew the guy who, who used to clean. Okay. So we okay. just okay. knew this guy as the plug who would come take the shoes and get the shoes clean. So I would ask this guy, who's doing this, who's doing this? Yeah. And this guy was like, ah, just give me your shoes and then I'll bring them back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I had been cleaning shoes since I was like nine, nine, ten, you know? Yeah. So I was like, ah, so now people are making money cleaning shoes. But I also know how to I, do this. I have, this is a skill I have. Yeah. <laughs> But the extent uh, at which this guy was like really like cleaning, it was like the shoes would come level. back. Yeah, the shoes would come back pristine. So I nicked this guy for half a while. Yeah. This guy uh, refused to show me the guy. <laughs> so I was like, ah, let me leave it alone. And then, but then it kept on like nagging me. So, so this is around like, this is from like 2014. This is like from 2014. Going on. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I'm done with, I was like literally like half and half with rapping and now I'm doing corporate, I've, I've just finished college 2016. Yeah. I'm doing a corporate gig, you know, um, graphic design, photography, videography, doing the whole thing. Uh, and then I then stumbled on uh, a video on YouTube. Um, from a guy uh, in South Africa. Yeah. His name is uh, Letabo Mukwena, and he runs one of the biggest, uh, in terms of the cultural context, not 
uh, not having so many branches, like but his on, impact yeah. on the culture. Okay, because yeah. right now he has like five stores uh, since mm. 2014. He does like cleaning as well. He does cleaning as well. But there are also other people in SA like Sneaker Shack that have like 37 branches. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, of course they've recent, recently partnered. But at that time I knew that guy uh, because I stumbled on his video uh, that he had done for, I don't remember which, which competition, but it was a competition where you, you would get funding. So yeah. that's when I stumbled into him and I was like, ah, so this is like a big business. Like this now finally it, is, it has come like to Africa because I used to see it in the States through the Jason Marks, you know? Yeah. So he's the guy who really like showed me that, you know, it, it can be done because he's from Davidton. Uh, it's a township, yep. you know, he set up a, 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 a business at his house and that's where he started cleaning. Yeah. So I was like, okay. So I had a pair of Nike SB, uh, the wheat ones with the, with the gold panels. Yeah. Um, I think they call it SB Olympic or something like that, but it, it was wheat and it had gold panels. So it had, it had been giving me troubles for a long time. Yeah, so I like really how liked, to clean it or what? Yeah, how to clean okay. it. Okay. You know, I, I knew how to clean shoes, but the sweet part was like, yeah. was yeah, really something <laughs> that I didn't really know. Because when I was in college, let's say we're left with a week to go back to college, I would take my shoes yeah. and uh, get into town, go by the street corner, to those people who clean yeah, shoes. Those guys who clean yeah, shoes. so if I had any suede <laughs> shoes, black, brown, I'll just give them the, the shoes and then they would take care of the shoes. But I knew that was like a temporary setup because um, if you get rained on or if you get wet, the, yeah, exactly. You know, the, confirm what they do is almost like coating. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's coating. It doesn't it doesn't last. But I was like, yo, man. These are the shoes that I have. I need to look fresh in college. Let me go and it was cheap. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I took that pair. I cleaned it. The, sh the soles were yellow. The suede was stiff and, and, and dirty. So I then cleaned those shoes for one week. <laughs> I cleaned the shoes first. They yeah. got clean. Uh, I did the unyellowing. Uh, through research, mixed a couple of products, did the, the unyellowing, yeah. and then the shoes got white, cleaned the suede, recolored it, and then they were brought back to life. And that was the first video that I made and I put it on the internet. You knew then with the, I wanted something. Yes, and at that time, <laughs> in the Aisha song, the Smart, you know, talking about so. Ah, oh, damn, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was the song <laughs> that time. And I was like, ah, this That's is... what, like 2016, 17? What? Yeah, uh, 17, 18. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but you know what? Yeah. The song was such a hit, even if you play it now. Like, yeah, it's still. It's still like, you know what I mean? Still a hit. It's still a hit. So I think it was just a year apart from that, from that day I cleaned those shoes and they were clean. Yeah. So. I posted that video with that track, with that Enzo Aisha track, and then you know the contrast and the packaging. People were like, "You posted it to what? To, is it I, I, IG? YouTube? To my IG? Because I had created a whole IG account around sneaker cleaning. About, around sneaker cleaning. Okay. Yes, okay. it was my personal account, and then I was like, yeah. "Let me change it since I all I already have people, my friends, and you know, family. Yeah, like follows it already. Yes." I think by that time I was around maybe 500 people that followed me. Yeah. And then I posted there. I, I literally changed all my accounts, my Twitter account. It was my um, my solo rap career account. Yeah. I switched it <laughs> up. Switched it up. <laughs> and then the only thing that I created that was new was the Facebook account. So I created all that and then I posted the vis visuals on all uh, social media platforms. And from that video, bang, all of my friends, like, they're like, ah, no, now you've decided to be serious with this. Okay, we'll support you. And then 
they started coming, they started like coming. They started. Days, so like yeah, that. it was in December 20, it was on the 12th of December 2018. 2018. That's when I posted that video. That really, yeah. So that, that's when I, we literally started. And, and so that's when you also, when you were changing these accounts, it was actually to smart yet as to well. To smart yet, yeah. It okay. was really okay. like okay. rejigging everything, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. So that's how it starts, right? Yeah. Um, but like you said, you mentioned something interesting there. Mm. What we've known shoe cleaners to be in our context, and I mean mm. by we, I mean like Zimbabwe, I think mm. in general, is what we've known is, is guys in the corner mm -hmm. who kind of ambush you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Most of the time at least, right? Mm -hmm. Like I used to say, good you opt into it like mm -hmm. consensually. Mm -hmm. Like they ambush you and then because they've done something to your shoe, you might as well get it cleaned. Mm -hmm. um, you could have taken that approach, but mm -hmm. you decided to go for like a more formalized approach. Um, mm -hmm. What inspired you to establish smart shit in that way to actually like formalize it? Um, just like I said, you know, the, the previous question I mentioned that there was a guy in the hood. Yeah. This guy was doing this thing just like how I'm doing it now. Yeah. You get. He was doing it really proper, proper. But I think because he had this middleman, he chose to remain anonymous. Yeah, you get yeah. what I mean? I don't know why <laughs> still, I still don't know this guy to up, this day. till this day. He's still like around? I don't know. Okay, but the enough. guy who used to refuse to, to give me his link up, yeah. he's always by Zimix. <laughs> and for a while we weren't talking. Because he used to, he knew I would ask, uh, I was asking for that number yeah. and he knew that now smart shit is doing this thing and yeah. he was like maybe he was like ah uh, let's see how it goes yeah. <laughs> so now he knows like I'm the top dog and now we talk but we, <laughs> but we, for a while we, we have never like uh, uh, like uh, revisited that, that conversation issue, that conversation <laughs> but you know we both know for a while like I there's do. something that's not addressed yes so that guy. Like he's the first guy who really like put that seed in me to, to to say like you know you can you can do it better than the guys on the street corner. Yeah. You can yeah you can I can, can like just do it better just do it better <laughs> and then the whole middleman street economics type of thing yeah. you know what I mean word of mouth that was the guy and then I said. When I was in college, I used to have my shoes cleaned by those guys on the street corners. Yeah. Right? But the one thing that those guys have done for years, they have not done for years, yeah. is institutionalizing the yeah. business, right? Exactly. Like making the a brand. Mo the model and making it a brand, you know? Because if it's a brand, uh, just like what Frank Lucas said in the American Gangster movie, yeah. You guarantee it, you know, you guarantee your product just like Coca-Cola. You guarantee like your, 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 your product just like Pepsi. There's a consistency expected. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what I mean? So nothing is wrong with their business model, the guys in the streets. Yeah. You know, I really like look up to them uh, when it comes to their hustle and their yeah. persistence, right? The only thing is the harassment. Yeah. Only, you know what I mean. <laughs> the harassment, other than the business model, is dope. What I, I would ask you though, yeah. is it sustainable? It is. It is. Like it they is. have like like repeat customers and whatnot within that context. I used to be a repeat customer. Fair enough. And yeah, yeah, you did mention that. Yes, <laughs> and 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 let me just put this out in the air because yeah. I I have I've been like. I've been with this thing for a while and I was like, I let me not tell anyone, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But I'd like to say, <laughs> maybe in the next, in the next couple of months or next year, yeah. that's one of the business models I want to I wanna partake. Oh, you want to you wanna go into the street as well? I want to go into the streets. Oh, that's interesting. I want to go into the streets, but the whole design the whole, the whole branding is it, is just like how Pepsi and uh, Delta are doing with the, with the, with the what are those things called? The yeah, stores, like, yeah, yeah, like you know, almost what? like the ice yeah. cream man type, the thing. ice cream man type of the lions yeah. type of thing. Yeah. yeah, those people they knew that um, 
most people won't go into the shop just to buy, you know, a, a drink. Yeah, you have to you find know? them where they are. You have to <laughs> find the customer, you know what I mean? So, the most prominent corners in Zimbabwe, it's um, Julius Nyerere and uh, Jason Moyo. Yeah. It's First Street and Jason Moyo. It's Second Street and George Salundika. So this is, it's, um, where else? Leopold and Nelson Mandela. Yeah. This is where you find these guys. At, you know what I mean? But the thing is, these guys, they run from the police because it's just them with their little chemicals or their shoe polishes. Yeah. And there's no, there's no set up. You know, so you know, <laughs> it's not legit. Yes, yes. <laughs> not, not they're not like allowed to be there. In you know what I mean? Yeah. So not to give too much away, but you know, I would like to you know go to the city council, and you know, uh, this is free game for anyone. Yeah, who wants like to, someone might hop on it. Yes, you know. I doubt it though. I doubt. Yes, I doubt yes, it. In, in yes, the yes, of yes. Zero, but but <laughs> their business model is is really like fluid. It's it's crazy. You know what, at one time we really like sat down with the guys at the shop yeah. and we we're like, how do you think, how, how much money do you think these guys make in a day? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> you know, and we found out that because we get like, we have repetitive customers, yeah. we have like a, a, a whole diary, um, we have orders that we know like each and every month so and so comes back each yeah. and every week each and every day someone comes back to our shop right but these guys they're in the street they meet new people every day yeah. they harass you they take your money <laughs> from you yeah of course they work in, in in groups like they work like they're individuals but they work in a group uh, so oh, maybe, okay, so that's how it is. Okay. Yes, so maybe they go home with, maybe per day, they can cash in a hundred bucks and then split it by four or five. Yeah, by four or five. Days. But that's a lot of money. But that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. You know what I mean? That's a lot of money. That's like three k. That's the, making three k. You, you get <laughs> what I mean? So that's crazy business, man. So yeah. That's yeah, I, I hear it. I hear yeah. it. I hear. It. I hear why that would be that would be like attractive to you, yeah. uh, but do you think what did institutionalizing it yeah. and 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 making it a brand? Because like you're saying, these guys are essentially a company, but then yeah. because there's no name to it, there's uh -huh. no like, mm -hmm. there's no that that relationship is consistent where you're talking yeah. to a brand repeatedly. Yeah. No one knows yeah. that side of things. Mm -hmm. What do you think doing that uh, did for you guys? Or at least not what do you think, what did it actually do for, for Smart Yet? So, here's what uh, making the hustle a brand, uh, it, helped us, it helped us in such a way that, yeah. uh, just like you said, when you're not a brand, a customer can't, can't trust you, uh, especially in our case, because the yeah. guys on the streets, they, they clean on the go. We ask our clients yeah. to leave their shoes. So if you don't know who to talk to the next day, you can't leave your shoes because there's, the no, there's, there's no there's no guarantee. There's no guarantee. <laughs> there's no trust, right? Yeah. Fair um, I remember one of my clients. Uh, shout out CEO Mancho. He's the one that told me. He's one of my first clients, and we had uh, dealt together for like three or four times. And he told me that, you know, what's much yet. Yes, you're cleaning shoes today, but if you're consistent enough, this thing will take you far um, more than just cleaning shoes and you open so many doors. Why? Because you're in the business of trust. Yeah. It takes a lot for someone to come. Like recently we had an order for about 200 pairs of shoes, right? Mm -hmm. And they were by the shop. My heart was racing. Like, <laughs> why if someone just comes in? Because what happened is the guy just came with a car. He opened the the, the, boot. the combi, yeah, the yeah. combi, and everyone on the street saw that two hundred pairs were going into smart shit. You know what I mean? So, so I think being a brand, 
you know being a brand really guarantees uh, the client and reassures them that you're going to give them the best service because if you're not happy with it you, you know, have something to lose <laughs> yeah you know they can't do it to a guy on the street corner and say ah ningi ningi eh boys at the corner jijiji who's that guy on the corner people don't know <laughs> like there's no accountability yes. model within yes. that right but they can go on facebook on uh, name and shame <laughs> yeah. and say ah don't know or they go. can go in your comments on ig yes. like what is that with dp and that messes up the whole thing and that messes up <laughs> so every time you know you 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 you're supposed to give 100 110% and yeah. then like you said um uh being taking smart jet into this institution space was was to really like break down the um, what would i say uh break down the processes right from where you're talking with the customer yeah. to the day they decide to bring in the issues and you talk to them again and you make them understand the process and then they leave the shoes for those two days yeah. <laughs> and then sometimes uh that's like just a base like timeline right yeah. so if we then find out that if that your shoe needs more attention yeah. we'll then like send you a message or call you and say you know uh uh your shoe is taking up so much uh dye uh it's not really getting to that midnight black if you want a black yeah. color and then we'll tell you that you know come tomorrow uh let's give it another 24 hours to see how it'll pan out yeah so yeah yeah yeah, yeah fair enough like mm-hmm. you can do that if it's a brand but if it's yeah. okay yeah, yeah. okay I and then uh, once they come back and then they they take their shoes um there's this whole aspect of now the client is happy and then you reengage you do after sales like yeah. okay so cuz the most frequent question is so now that you have cleaned my shoes yeah. what can i do to make these shoes uh, stay you know fresh For as long as possible as right? long yeah. as possible because someone would might bring a pair like a sweat pair and we clean them for like 15 or 20 bucks so for them to bring them in constantly it all it all yeah, like that's hurt that their adds up, right that yeah. adds up. <laughs> you know what i mean so the question is always that's this is also another question why would i clean shoes for 20 bucks yet i bought the shoe for like 50 bucks yeah. you get what i mean <laughs> so so when you re-engage the customer when they buy at the shop and then you tell them no uh, the best way to keep your shoes um, to maintain them is clean them as you go once you wear them the first time when, when you get home uh, just take uh, if it's if it's all leather just take a, a, a wet wipes yeah. and then you know so Wipe that there's no build up of dirt if it's a soy shoe get yourself a, a toothbrush don't put water on the soil just dust it out and use an eraser for deep marks you know just this one or two little things and then you can also do after sales because we also sell those uh shoe polishes the yeah. renovators um shoe boxes the containers that keep your shoes uh uh protected from sunlight and dust because the sunlight and you know the weathering element the elements are the ones that cause the shoe to the shoe soles to turn yellow. Oh, so okay. yeah. yeah. So after that if then they want to buy um they'll buy the the ex the add-ons yeah. and then at okay. the shop Fair as enough. well we've set up uh, we've curated our shop is really like a gallery per se you know what I mean? Yeah. Because we've curated in 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 the context of quote and quote uh black culture you know what i mean I like yeah. so we have um wolf inspiration like the frames uh we have uh one of one uh t-shirts like the one that i'm wearing right now okay yeah, yeah. one yeah it, it's are, not a one of are, one they say sale? but yeah those are for sale oh. this this t-shirt is actually like what it's from 98 So you can imagine yeah, 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 it's yeah, it's yeah. been here for a while. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's been here for a while. And so we thrift 
and these are bed the, the pants that I'm wearing they're yeah. bed pants uh, when I wore this for the first time and I posted them on my page Nigo the owner of Babe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, where did you get those? <laughs> he doesn't even have them, you know what I mean? That's tough, though. The I young, love that. I yes, love that if, so, you're, if you're talking to Nigo, like, yes, as, so, as a fan of fashion, that's... You that, get that's out of it. So, because these are rare, and <laughs> I got them at the thrift, so we also sell thrifted clothes. Yeah. Uh, we're just out there to promote uh, original merchandise, you know, because Zimbabwe is become like a dumping yeah, ground for, for like, Chinese, for these for Chinese brands, fake brands, brands. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so it's a whole process. The whole right institution, here. institution, institu what, what, what institutionalization? Yeah, of, of the <laughs> brand. It's, 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 you know, for us to be able to to sell more. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. So after we've we've sold everything, we can then say. You can then also re-engage the customer and say, thank you for business, uh, thank you for being a patron. Um, would you mind posting us on our page? Yeah. On your, on on, your page, on page and take yeah. us, you know yeah. what I mean? So if you never know who, what, what their contact, contact list looks like, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? And, yeah. that's, and that's how we've been able to, to get, you know, uh, affluent people, people from all walks of life, just from that, because um, I've noticed that, yes, you can know for brand from, 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 from social media, but you do not have like a first hand experience, experience yeah. right? So I've, I've noticed that someone who comes through social media will negotiate a price. So if you tell them we well, clean for us from five dollars, they'll say, "Ah, but Dad, I'm bringing in ten pairs. Can we? Can you give me like a discount? I'll give you four dollars a pair or three dollars." Yeah. But for a person who has had a friend tell them yeah, about word us, of mouth, isn't it? and it's <laughs> word of mouth, those guys, you can upsell them. Ah, oh, okay. Anytime they can come through and they'll be like. Oh, so so and so told me about your service. I really like what you're doing. So how much is it? You can just throw in. You can have a new price and they and their game. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I hear that. You, you Ooh, get out of it. Yeah. You get they out of it. They value it differently. They they value it differently. You know what I mean? So um, that's that's uh, what uh, making a brand uh, will help you like do. Uh, grow your brand, uh, have that uh, level of um, what, what, what can I call it? Chungi level, JJ Jungo, nah, this is the place this to go. This is different, this is cool, this is, this is a cool business. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's like that, um, mm. that importance in, in, in culture, like yeah. it's, it's less a business but more like a thing to do for, yeah. for people, it's less yeah. like a transaction and more yeah. like yeah. an experience yeah. Yeah. for the customer. Yeah, yeah. Is, is that yeah. it? Yeah. Fair enough, mm -hmm. fair enough. And so, you, you guys have uh, cleaned over like 10k, 10,000 yeah. pairs of shoes. I saw that on your Instagram. Yeah. Um, you've talked about how you acquire and you retain customers. I think you've touched on that. Yeah. Uh, quite quite in depth, right? Yeah. Um, how important is social media for you guys in all of this? Because yeah, it sounds like at least to me, it's, mm -hmm. it's where my first exposure of yeah. smart shit was before I even knew you or yeah. we were in, in the same spaces. Yeah. Um, I always saw it and I thought, oh, this, this is interesting, this is yeah. different, right? Yeah. But how important has your social media presence been for you guys? Okay. Um, for a while, let's start with the number print over 10K. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is just like a number, an average number. Okay. It could be like way more is what you're it's saying. It's way more. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, fair it's, enough. It's, it's fair way enough. more. It's, it's just to show people that, you know, I've had experience. You know, there's, right now, I can't say there's, there's a shoe that I haven't cleaned, right? When that's more like 10,000 hours of cleaning shoes. Okay, right? I hear it. Like yeah. You guys have skin in the game. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So we've cleaned more than that. It's just an average. But 
um, the whole the whole social media plays um, it came into effect when so remember I told you the first video that I yeah. made and then yes and then friends and family are really vibing to this thing even people that i worked with at yeah, this company that i was yeah when for, you were still corporate yes you know they'll bring in their shoes and at that time i was like who can i engage from a social media perspective that can help me push this brand someone that can bring in numbers because yeah. at that time i was really listening to gary vaynerchuk Gary V. Yeah, and then yeah, Gary V is a hands on yeah, type of a guy. You know? go. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? So I was like, so who, who can I engage? And you know what? I needed someone that would represent me even if I don't, if I'm invisible. Yeah. You know, even if it's just that brand only and people don't know the face to smart shit. And I needed that person. And I, I was looking for a person, for that kind of a person in Zim. Yeah. I looked for so many, like so many people. And then my final resting place, as funny as it is, it was DJ Towers. Yeah. Why? A, people, a, a lot of people know DJ Towers from the social media boom in Zim, the Instagram era, right? Yeah. But they don't know that this guy, I had been following his whole, his whole journey from yeah. his from his uh, team board days, you know, when he was yeah. with Shingi, right? So this guy has always said, I'm the DJ Khaled of Zim, right? So, and I saw the moves that he was making with Shingi, right? And the whole team board era, it was a it was a three year run that was like really dope, yeah. and I knew that he was the brains behind the moves that they were making. And fast forward that whole thing to DJ Towers in 2018. Yeah. Okay, he has this tag on his back that he is a bagger. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's how people perceive him now. That's how yeah. people perceive him now. He's a bootlegger, right? Yeah. But I'm like. I'm really looking at this content. I'm like, okay, cool. This guy, because my target market is uh, a living standard measure of a 10 to the 13s, right? I need someone who has a car, who has a nice job, a nice hustle. Yeah. You know, cleaning shoes is not a, like a thing. They can just be like, ah, I need my shoes cleaned. Let me send them to smash it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All these other social media influencers, they didn't have that. You know, I won't mention names, yeah. but these guys, <laughs> they, they had like, yes, their algorithms were crazy. They were crazy. But you couldn't take like a certain type of a guy who was popping or, or, or a chick who was popping on social media and tell, the, and tell their followers to, to bring in uh, their sneakers for cleaning yeah because yeah. maybe the people that are on their instagram page of course okay they're making five thousand likes ten thousand likes but those people maybe they're in the rural areas they're in the ghetto they don't yeah. understand the lifestyle that i'm yeah. trying to push because yeah. i come from a hip-hop background you know you need to be a sneaker head yeah yeah you exactly to, you really need to like yeah. love sneakers for you to see value in you, that so you can that's our first that like sneakerheads that's our first priority yeah. <laughs> on sneakerheads first and then everyone else you know what i mean so at that time you know my pockets are full, like my pot i'm well catered for by my corporate job i'm like yeah. i don't need everyone i just need sneakerheads i want to build on the culture because i'm a rapper i'm a hip-hop head yeah dj towers for for like since 2013 for, okay let's say 14 15 yeah Always looked fresh. Yeah. Always had nice kicks. Always had impact on culture. Yeah. He was in those circles as well, I guess. Yes. Now he's in in a he's in a place where he is like the middleman between my ghetto youth. Yeah. Nembinga. Yeah. The, the new money guys. The new money guys. You know. The fifth. Is that he, like fair? You know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? If there's one thing that's happening in Zim. 
it's new money and I'm happy that yeah. you know yeah. uh, a lot of young guys are making money now you know um, legal illegal hey, it, people, is it is what it is what it is people are making money you get know what I mean so here's the guy who's the middleman no one else is doing that right yeah. so I'm like okay let me link up with this guy linked up with a guy uh, fast forward he does a video um posted it on his social media yeah. i posted the video on my social media i mean 99 likes 100 <laughs> likes he posted it three four minutes five thousand likes yeah you know, <laughs> like a different game now <laughs> a different game that's when the whole thing started popping you know my social media started going crazy yeah. after that um it got to a point where the new money guys you know how it is in zim when there's a new thing uh the new money guys <laughs> want to be associated with that thing, yeah you know so every day that i would go and pick up shoes people would be like do it do, do a before and after come drop ah, off the shoes okay so them wanting to be on my page was like a plus yeah you know what i mean yeah. and, <laughs> And at that time, I remember, you know, there are also other people that have cleaned shoes for, like, that I won't mention because they've asked me not to like not mention, <laughs> you know what I mean? But I have cleaned shoes for the highest of the highest, you know what I mean? Like, in Zim, like, period. Like, but I don't post them. But for those that I have posted, they really help me because the circle you know the one thing about the, the new money guys the people the young people that are hustling in the street yeah there's this you know i don't know if i can call it a family vibe yeah. but if one guy if, if so the new money guys are, are, are the people that have castles what phone yeah. phone <laughs> shops whatever if someone who's at zimix zim post more Post that their shoes were cleaned by smart jet. Someone who's selling cars could easily go garage or go wherever. Who be like, I have an example. I need to be on that. I need to be on that. You know, that's that's how that's how it went. And you know, the whole social media game, like like what I was saying with Gary Vaynerchuk, was like. His story is he built his father's business from a hundred million, hundred, hundred thousand dollar business to a three million dollar business mm. during the dot com era. Yeah. So he was always on the phone, right? And he left that business and he left with nothing. He left the business with his dad and he started his media company. Till today, he is rich. Yeah. But every day, <laughs> the guy is on his phone talking to people each and every day you know what i mean yeah and that feeds into his personal brand as well yeah. you know what i mean so you know so, um, we are very fortunate in our generation that you know we have that kind of access yeah that platform know, is, yeah, is, is yeah, crazy yeah, yeah it's, it's really crazy. it's really crazy yeah. you know I, I don't use it like how these other guys in the room are using it like really they're really ferocious on it you know is it yeah but, <laughs> you know <laughs> you know it has worked out for me i'm a social media business yeah. you know, my thing started popping on social media you know what i mean and i asked you like one last thing yeah uh, maybe it's two questions in one but yeah, yeah. you were in corporate yeah. at some point obviously you decided to leave and yeah. um do smart shit like full time. Yeah. What point was that? And then secondly, what lessons did you learn from corporate that fit the context of, of smart shit if there are any? Okay, can you come again? At what point did you decide could it made sense to leave corporate? Yeah. And what lessons did you leave corporate with? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the first question, I will not like a rebuttal, but I'll say yeah. one of my co closest friends, uh, Nyasha Jeche, uh, from Calligraph, right? Yeah, brilliant guy. Yeah, he's my brother. <laughs> he graduated. He's my brother now. So he asked me on Thursday. Was yeah, on Thursday. 
Wednesday or Thursday, he asked me, he was like, so do you regret leaving the place that you're working mm. uh, <laughs> at that time? Do you regret it? Because all of us, we went to college together. Yeah. All of us, at one point, we worked corporate jobs. And I don't know what happened. All of us were like, ah. <laughs> All of y'all lived. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, do you regret it? And I was like, no, I don't regret it. Yes, being an entrepreneur comes with its challenges, right? And um, let me go back to saying that the reason why I left corporate was, yeah. one, the first reason was the corporate uh, environment, it was stifling for me. Because, okay, because there were people that... Um, we're not doing their... Okay, let me put it in short. Yeah. Like Shandalan. You get what I mean? Okay. Like, you're not doing your job. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I you, think you, I get that. You get what I mean? So, um, I was like, why is this... Like, my boss was always on our case, you know? Trust me. She's one of the... She was good at what she was she, she brilliant does, at a job you know? yeah. she was brilliant at a job like up to this day like if i could meet, if i meet her in the streets like i really like want to tell her she, hey you're really like good you know yeah. what i mean but there were things other things that she was doing outside of her the work criteria <laughs> you know what i mean that were really for me it was stifling right yeah but that was just like corporate politics. Yeah, there's a lot of politics, isn't it? You know what I mean? So the <laughs> politics, the politics, because I, I, was put, I was putting so many hours into this. I would go to the... At, at one point, I would go to work in the morning, yeah. work till five, yeah. continue working till like... 1 a.m. Yeah. Go back home. Wake up the next morning at six and then the office, right? Yeah. All that work, like I felt like it was going in vain because I was pushing, putting too much of my energy yeah. into a corporate, right? Yeah. I was a pawn, you know. I was a small car yeah. in a big system. Yeah. <laughs> my efforts. Weren't versus being, the rewards, I suppose. <laughs> versus the rewards, you get what I mean? That was that was the first thing, right? Yeah. And then the the second thing was um, in twenty eighteen there was like a, a economic crunch or something Ooh, like like yeah. the whole thing went to shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's when we really started. Uh, not when we really started, but when we almost fully came back to like our own currency, I think. Yeah, I yeah. think that's a fair thing to say. You get what I mean? So at that time, I was like, hey, uh, now I'm working for free now. <laughs> I'm working for free. The money that they're giving me is crazy. I need to have like a side hustle on the yeah. side. But then it was also affected by, at that time, I, had, I was shadowing for uh, a job, like a, a higher grade. Yeah. yeah. So I was shadowing that, that job, like that, that, that position the whole time. Uh, shadowing, shadowing. So I had two jobs. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't recognize that I was shadowing that whole, that whole situation, yeah. right? And then it comes to a time where they're like, okay, so we want to elevate you to that position. Yeah. And by that time, that's 2018, right? At that time, I remember one of the branches closing down because someone had come to spend all the money that they had they'd got from selling their properties. So yeah. they wanted to hedge their money. So they come and they came and bought all of the the stock in the shop yeah. and then the shop had to be closed down and they like they say they're renovating right so and at that point in time a lot of people 
in, in, in that corporate uh, set up at the company that I was working for, they were sagged uh, yeah. unfairly, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, okay, so are you saying they were, they were essentially told to come board in elevator, you guys will come back? But not not, not per se. I remember on that day, one of my, one of my colleagues was in that, in that uh, store, yeah. right? And he had a trolley, a low bed trolley full of alcohol and mm. another trolley full of foodstuffs. And then the bosses, whilst they were closing down the shop, mm. they asked themselves, where is he getting that money? Because, you know, in Zim, let me tell yeah. young folks out there, in Zim, if you're working corporate, your salary is 300, 400, yeah. less than a thousand for most of these people. Yeah. So, the way that they survive, my dear. Yep. You, you get out of me. You have to, you have to do something else on yeah. the side. Yeah. So, for me, it got to a point where I was like, now I'm, 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 I'm going into my thirties, right? And I'm like, okay. So, if I take this job now, mid, uh, middle management, right? Mm. I'm driving a nice car. It's a company car which I pay for as well, mm. right? I pay like <laughs> a, a fee, or a pay fee. You, you get what I mean? I pay for that. I pay, okay, I will have like a, a, a bigger salary. Madira Jawanda, mm. I move to a cooler place, chi 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 chi. But look at all these guys that are leaving, that have been discharged uh, yeah. because of politics. Yeah, like that. that people could be would, <laughs> people, life would change from a point where this guy is driving a nice Chevrolet Trailblazer mm. or a, a GD6. He goes back to his own car. Mm. Overnight. Know? Yeah, overnight. And then <laughs> you move out of your house. Whatever, I comfortable, don't know, space, comfortable you space. You go back to Glenora. Yeah. I was like, is this going to be my, re my reality is one day? Is it sustainable? <laughs> is it sustainable? Because Maria Madiri, you know, it, it 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 overshadows you. You won't know this tomorrow. You eat yeah, it. Yeah, it you, eat that, you know what I mean? You you eat that money, thinking good day. Yeah, it's not tomorrow. Everything is gonna be fine. <laughs> so I was like, I was just putting everything into perspective, and I was like, ah, no, man. Ah, let me. And at that point in time, my diary. Yeah. I remember that this one meeting where where they deliberating. Uh, whether to elevate me or not. Mm. I was busy coming up with my smudged logo, <laughs> everything. In that meeting, I was, you were out of I, I was jotting things down. You know what I mean? I was like, ah, me, I'm going out, right? And then the lessons that I learned yeah. uh, in that corporate space was, so for the department that I was working for, I was in the marketing department, right? Yeah. Uh, for me, I was a graphic designer. Uh, slash videographer, photographer, photographer, you know, that whole crazy the same thing where you're doing everything. You yeah, you know what I mean? a lot of things. You know what I mean? So, and then I'm shadowing this whole managerial post, right? Yeah. So, this managerial post, like, gave me perspective where I was like, okay, the whole term manager is you are basically paid, you are a foreman, man, a foreman, mm -hmm. you, are, you are paid to manage people, your subordinates, right? So that whole key element of just having people, like managing people and working with people and having people skills, yeah. that was uh, also like a learning curve for me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it also helped me on how I was going to hire people that okay. I was going to work with in SmartJet. Because at that time, Smartjet was a year old and I was still working this corporate gig and I would work a nine to five, right? Go back home, uh, rest a bit, uh, see my girl, uh, no, work nine to five, go into town, see my girlfriend who yeah. is, who's now my wife, yeah. see her, get it to the coffee, <laughs> get home, get home at like eight o'clock, 
eat my 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 Your dinner, supper. Yeah. my supper, uh, relax for an hour, start cleaning shoes at nine, sleep at three, cleaning shoes, right? So that whole experience, I had it for like a year, right? Till t- it was December. In December, the orders were coming in. Crazy. Like, this is too much. Crazy, <laughs> crazy. I was I was literally like woke all the time like i didn't sleep i was like but why am i hurting myself it seems like this thing is what is working why can i just you know leave and then the other thing that um i so like i was hiring now i started hiring people yeah. like to, to to work for me during the day whilst i'm at work and make deliveries yeah. right so that whole aspect of being a manager was like helping was me out to figure out this situation and then from the business processes, like what I mentioned before, talking to the person, the order, and you do the whole rollout till the whole the, the shoes are out the shop. Yeah, you know, um, I used to uh, make orders, have action logs at work. You would have your action logs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so everyone at Smash it have their own action logs. Have Kali to board. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like okay. Car, so those are car, processes from you know, from corporate. Yeah, right? <laughs> you've got an order register. These shoes came in this day. They're supposed to go out that day. Yeah. Chi, 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 chi. Uh, follow ups on payments, receipts, because we do deposits. Yeah. Uh, sometimes full payments, and it was just like uh, trying to see how to like set up this this corporate thing with smart jet. So. So when I was working that corporate gig, dealing with the accounts guys, when my suppliers were nagging me, yeah. how far was the payment? It helped me navigate. Even you know when you are lying to you, yeah. because accounts you have not processed the account, and you're like, ah no, no, it'll be done in the next forty eight hours. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or yeah. they know it's not. Or you have paid them, but they have not done the job, yeah. and your boss is on your neck. Yeah. They're breathing down your neck. They're like. Why is this not done? You know, these are things that I also took up uh, from from that corporate from that corporate gig. Like, um, uh, because I was in marketing, I'd see how they would do collaborations, uh, promotions. Yeah. You know, the company that I was working for has the biggest promotion in Zimbabwe, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So yeah. I'd see I'd see how they would curate the whole event, right? And then they would, they would ask their suppliers to provide the money. They literally didn't put up any money for those promotions. Yeah. <laughs> They'd say, okay, we are running this promotion. We need $100,000 yeah. from you guys. Yeah. So from maybe uh, 50, let's say 46 suppliers, yeah. they would have like, by 100000 that's how much? 4.6 million, yeah. right? Yeah. And then they would like, be like, Okay, so and so uh, amount X is going towards buying the thing that is going to be worn for your for mm-hmm. your brand, right? Yeah. Um, and then such and such amount is going towards marketing expense, and yeah. and then uh, from your hundred thousand, uh, you are you have access to sixty four branches and Zim. This is the projected numbers for. The money that you're going to make out yeah. of that hundred thousand dollars, yeah. and yeah. they would yeah. make a killing. <laughs> the supplier would make a killing because yeah. from that hundred thousand, they will make maybe five million bucks. Jeez. So for them, Jeez. it was Jeez. easy nothing. money. It's, like, it's yeah, not. It's nothing. Money. It's free money. You see, because that's so, like what? That's fifty x. Yeah. So that's 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 how I got to learn that okay, collaboration is key. You know, you need to collab with people. So sometimes it's not everything that needs money for it to be done. You yeah. Know? You can approach someone and say, look, I'm smart shit. You know, uh, let's do this kind of deal. I've, I, have I can give you access to so-and-so. Yeah. And, you know, those are some of the things that I also learned uh, from that corporate gig. Um, as, far as, as far as marketing, you know, these old companies, they really go at it 360 because they have the money. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? They're on radio. And like 360, you mean they're everywhere, isn't it? Like, they're on radio, billboards, TV. Social. It's social YouTube. media. YouTube. Yeah, I YouTube. see it. Everything. Now. Everything. <laughs> they are there. You know? Yeah. So, of course, right now, we are in our fourth year. We don't have that big of a budget for marketing. Yeah. But I know that marketing is key for right. one day you need to you need to, to know do that 360 as well to have that whole 360 set up you need to have like a whole sales team marketing team yeah. uh, operations team yeah. <laughs> dispatch and, and all those all of that kind of, all of those kind of things and for for also for other things like you know in in like during that covid period I was yeah. like, I couldn't get to, because in the south, the ghettos, that's yeah. where like the, most of the restrictions were like really tight. Yeah. In, yeah. The, in the north, it was, <laughs> uh, it was fluid, man. It was cool. Yeah. But, you know, I needed that, you know. That's where you can tell it. Yes. Yeah. So I engaged like a bike company, like, yo, let's work together. And that's how I was able to survive during that whole COVID era. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just off that whole corporate gig um, experience. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> just to digress a bit, yeah. you know, when I tendered my resignation in February 2020, right? I'm, I'm like, hey, yo, I want to go on in there. Like, you are crazy. Why would you want to go when you have this uh, jo uh, job that you want to give you? Yeah. And I'd done my math and I was like, okay, if I clean so many pairs of shoes, <laughs> this is how much I'm going to get right now. I'm making this by June, I'll be making this. I'm, I've got it on lock, right? Yeah. The day I left that, that job on the 31st of March, yeah. on that Friday, my boss was ducking me because she didn't want to do that whole take over, hand over, take over situation. <laughs> she, she, she still thought like she would persuade me to stay. Yeah. And I was like, ah, me, I'm not coming back on Monday because it would, it would already be like the second yeah, or the third, yeah, right? Exactly. So I'm, I'm not coming back. I go home Friday, Saturday. Sunday, the president is on the news. There's a, <laughs> there's a <laughs> announcement. <laughs> We are going on lockdown. This is crazy for you, right? Because in one like, day, I'm like, <laughs> you're like this goes against everything I'm projecting. Like, <laughs> bro, it was tough. You can't, you can't tell me anything about COVID, man. It was crazy. I'm like, okay, ah, uh, this is a hurdle, my man. And then they're like 21 days. I'm like, ah, at least 21 days. Boom, we'll be, I will like bounce everyone back. thought it was 21 you know, days initially. Yes, I've got my little car savings tucked yeah. away. Yeah. I've got a baby yeah. on the way, mind yeah. you. Damn, right? That's, that's crazy. So this is the second. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah. This is the second of April on a Sunday. President says 21 days. On the seventh, my son is born. Jeez. That's another Jeez. hurdle. Uh, but uh, but Dara is now unemployed. Dara is unemployed. <laughs> there is COVID. Imagine, bro. Uh, Damn, you went straight into the fire. <laughs> bro, I was in the deep end, bro. I was in the deep end. I was in the deep end. To make matters worse, because I had already, you know, when you book for the whole maternal item, yeah. um, I booked it already. The boy is about to, you know, come to this world. They're like, no man, we need to do a C-section, but we need money. Yeah, so that's like savings, all of those savings. Like Smart jet savings. We are taking those, <laughs> put them into C-section. Damn, yeah. you know, it that's never goes as planned. Bro, that's my story. It was crazy, bro. It was crazy. <laughs> you know, sometimes I look back and be like, yo, yeah. We live and we learn. We live and we learn. <laughs> we live and we learn. It was crazy. My whole 2020 was crazy, man. You know, but but, but you know what? We kept pushing. We kept yeah. pushing. So for anyone, you know, who's out there, you know, trying to do their thing, like what you said, it never goes as we planned. Yeah. Um, but just know, you know, you have to, you have to just grind it out, you know, and just act like 
it's your it's your first day like on that grind yeah. grind like how you're grinding when you first started but then as you grow you can't choose the, the, the steps that you're taking when you're a week old yeah you need to yeah. also you know level up level yeah. up you know what I mean so yeah man we've been leveling up you know yeah mm. I think so from from what I've seen outside looking in it, it yeah. looks like that and yeah th thanks so much for making the time and, and, and coming to speak yeah cool man cool